So you want to start a nerf club. Well, you've come to the right place. I'm Bots from Bots and Blasters, and in this series, we'll talk about how to start a nerf club from scratch, from bare bones beginnings. This is part two of a series on how to start a nerf club, so I'll go ahead and link to the first video, just for your guys' ease of convenience. I strongly recommend you watching it. It mainly talks about your pre-planning as far as what your goals for the club should be. In this episode, however, we'll talk about recruitment. Now before we move on to the actual act of recruitment, let's talk about expectations. There is a myth that a successful club must have a lot of players, almost hundreds, before they consider it a success. The best thing about our hobby is you can fling foam with only two people. So having a smaller club is nothing to be ashamed of. If anything, having a solid core group of players can be a solid foundation for growth in the right direction. So focus more on the quality of player you're looking for to recruit not the quantity of players. A sudden large number of players will invite plenty of undesirables, and if your group is not ready for a mass influx, you might find yourself with not enough blasters, ammo, or just staff to deal with these new players. A nerf club should always be open to the public and accepting of new members, however this does not mean that you should take any player who shows up with bad sportsmanship or bad attitudes. These players can usually be corrected by the group mod team or just ask them not to return. Never be afraid to turn someone away. A bad player will drive away potential new players faster than you can believe. Alright, let's get into the nitty gritty of it. How do you get people to come to your event? Well, you can't just stand around in the nerf aisle at Target or Walmart all day. Talk to every person who comes by. Although, side tangent, I have had a great deal of success when people ask me for my opinions when they see me standing there, usually when they're buying a gift for a son or daughter. But that's besides the point. Don't loiter. Period. It can make your new group look bad and possibly get you banned from the store. So let's get the obvious out of the way first. Word of mouth with family and friends. If you have any embarrassment about telling your immediate friends and family that you're interested in starting a Nerf club, then maybe you need to take a step back and focus on gaining some self-confidence. I'm not trying to be rude, but if you cannot explain to your friends and family why you are passionate about the hobby in fear of mockery, then it is going to be a thousand times worse when you're having to talk to strangers about the hobby. This is not to alienate or discourage anyone with a vision for a fun nerf group. This is to help you as a future group leader or recruiter to be sound in your passion. Trust me, if you sound unenthusiastic about the foam flinging hobby, this will be evident to people and they will not take you seriously. Now when it comes to talking about nerf to family and friends, tell anybody and everybody about what you are planning, even if they don't seem like the type of person you would think that would be into the hobby. There is a concept called the six degrees of separation. This means that you might tell your aunt who rolls your eyes at the notion of a nerf club, but she might work with someone who has a child that has a huge nerf arsenal that annoys her to no end with their home wars. Your aforementioned aunt has a higher chance of recruiting for you to get this new potential player to your event without you having to do a thing. By the same token, let's say you have a new friend that isn't into nerf at all, but they could have a sibling who would kill to go out to an event. This is the basic concept of what we call networking. Get yourself known as the nerf person or the foam person because people will come around and ask you and refer other people to you. Make yourself a basic flyer and share it around when you do talk to friends and family. You are building your network of contacts, so always try to have at least one with you. Make sure your flyer has the name of the group, a contact for the group. This can be a Facebook, email, or even cell phone number if you're comfortable. Use a QR code for phones that can scan it for quick access to the group. There's several free websites that can actually help generate QR code that will link directly to your Facebook group website or what have you. And also more importantly, this should also show action shots of the group, even if it's just photos that you have online. Most groups love free publicity, so they will not mind their photos being used to promote the hobby as a whole. Make sure you use photos that actually display what the group is about. Do not use photos that show 3D printed blasters such as FDLs, Caliburns, etc if you yourself might not have access to these blasters. Remember, we're trying to appeal to those not in the hobby. Try to show pictures of blasters in play that players can find themselves either at store shelves or thrift stores. This makes the hobby look more accessible to newcomers. 
Also, when designing your flyer, use buzzwords or action bubbles to get people's attention. Use terms such as tag or be tagged. This lets parents know, or the uninitiated know, that this is a safe place to play and avoid obvious words such as shoot and other words that are associated with violence that I can't say here for channel monetization. Also use the words free to play if your group is free to access, as most parents automatically think there will be a cost to participate. Now there can be a donation to participate, but this is a concept for another video. Here's an example of my club's current flyer. Outside of friends and family, where do you go to recruit? Regardless of what you choose, remember to face rejection with a smile. Getting upset or emotional because a particular place doesn't want to put up your flyer will not help you. It has happened to me in the past that a place has changed their mind later when they see the club as a success. So don't burn any bridges you don't need to. First up, libraries. Now I've had great success with going to libraries and most people don't think to go to a library to recruit because of books. However, most people who frequent libraries are usually low on cash and as such they're looking for free forms of entertainment. This is an excellent chance for you to put up a flyer, with permission, to let people know what you are about. Most libraries do have public bulletin boards to put up community focused flyers. Next, youth centers. Youth centers such as boys and girls clubs, community event centers, and even gyms can be great places to go and put up a flyer. Very similar to libraries, most people who frequent these places are low on cash and always looking for free sources of entertainment. I have worked with the boys and girls clubs locally, and I've had great success and they've become a great asset with helping direct new players and families to us for different groups I have run in the past. Next, local high schools and possibly middle schools. Now, if you're already in school, this can be hit or miss. However, if you are not actively in school, let's say you're an adult, I would suggest approaching the campus you wish to recruit at without any blasters, no tactical gear, no nothing, come casual but professional, and ask if they would allow you to pass out flyers for your new Nerf Club community. Emphasize community so this way they know it's open to the public. Now, assuming you pass the vibe check, this is where having a parent or 18 plus member can add credibility to your club, most administration will be fine with you promoting club events that are part of the local community. They might have you deal with some external paperwork beforehand, but always take it seriously when filling it out. Make sure you're completely transparent about what the club is. This way when you approach the school later with bags of blasters on the day of recruitment, it will not cause alarm. I have personally done this a lot in the past and it's always worked out great for me as long as you're honest and transparent with what it is that you're doing. Colleges and Universities now, similar to high schools, college and universities are a great place to recruit. There might actually be less work for you to do since most clubs at this level are more student driven. So if you're not a college student but know someone who is, pass along a flyer and explain what you're trying to do. The only thing I will caution you not to do is do not try to make your club associated with any educational institution. This might seem beneficial up front but can cause a lot of problems as members graduate and move on and you will eventually lose your connections to the college or university. Focus on recruitment there, but direct them off campus for games and events. A slight tangent here, you might have a group of members who all go to the same college and want to make a sister club there. This is a great way to start HVZ events, but another video for another time. Coffee shops and local gaming stores. Most recruiters don't even consider coffee shops, but as with a library, they usually have community boards where flyers can be displayed. They are also frequented places for college students who are looking for places to study, but also might be looking for something to do on the side to unwind. Boom! Nerf Club Flyer. My local coffee shop also has monthly community markets where we have also set up tables to recruit in the past. But another video for another time. Now let's not forget about gaming stores. Whether it's for video games or traditional card games to buy magic or play D&D. These also have community boards where you can put up a flyer. Usually, I talk to the owner or somebody who works there and try to work out some beneficial arrangement. Usually, I'll defer my players to the store for gaming goodies, as long as the store continues to keep my flyers up and more importantly, has them accessible to the public. Also, when it comes to video game stores, try to avoid big stores like GameStop. They usually have corporate mandates about promotions that do not benefit them. Now, I'll preference this by saying this can vary from store manager to store manager, but as a rule of thumb, most big franchise stores are most likely not community focused. Conventions, expos, and festivals. 
The last area I have had success with is conventions, expos, and festivals. I'm putting this at the bottom because most places will require you to pay a fee to set up a table or a booth. These places can be hit or miss, so do your research beforehand. For example, going to a car convention isn't going to be a good place to recruit. However, going to an anime convention or a toy collector's expo might be, since it will target players in the age range that you might be interested in, or at the very least help defer and network people together. Now, some venues will give you room for a play area, others won't, that's perfectly fine. I'll talk about convention recruiting in a future video. Well, that about wraps up this video. But what about social media, you might be asking? Well, then that'll be our next area. I feel I've rambled on long enough. This video was way longer than I intended it to be. I'm Bots, and I hope this video was helpful and gave you some ideas as far as recruitment. All of these are tactics I have used in my personal endeavors for club recruitment, and they have helped out significantly. So please leave me a like, comment if this helped you, or gave you some idea as far as how to go about recruiting. Subscribe for more and share this video since it helps my channel grow and helps the hobby grow. If this also did help you out in any way, I have a coffee link down below if you'd like to buy me a coffee. I'd appreciate it. I also have a Discord, Foam After Dark, down below. We just chat, hang out, talk foam, have a good time. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time on the battlefield.